Oh, no, we came out of clean. We had a great week of preparation. Um, no, no injuries. Um, uh, Wingo's out. Um, uh, uh, Zai is out. Um, those were the two, right? Those are the two. Those are the two that they, they continue to be out. Second question. What? 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 I would name a hurricane. Um, I would probably say um, it's got to have a Louisiana. It's got gumbo. Gumbo. How's that? That's pretty good. Hurricane Gumbo? Why, why hasn't there been a Hurricane Gumbo? You would think there would have been, right? Okay. Brian, I'll go back into the, the normal, the, the order that you normally follow. Uh, Someone just talked about the corners. With, with their emphasis on play action and ability to, to take the deep shots, are safeties really going to be the ones that are going to have to be on their A game this week? Yeah, certainly they'll be part of it. Um, you know, clearly it's it's driven by coverage, um, and you know, formation. You know, determines who and uh, what player has a particular run fit that can be influenced. Um, and and then obviously the ball, um, you know, is 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 part of that, right? You know, getting the ball into that area where that safety has a particular run fit. You know, the corners should. You know, obviously not be part of it, but, you know, if a safety is not in a particular area, that's where you've seen some of these home run shots where, you know, guys are running free because corners are chasing them. So, um, you know, clearly we, we understand, um, you know, the play action shots and the effectiveness of the running game and how that sets it up. Um, you know, so we have to be, you know, uh, in a position to um, stay on top of the, the routes and, and um, you know, minimize those opportunities. Um, I think it's been several weeks since we asked you about him, but just how, how's Greg Brooks doing? Is there any update on just his progression or anything like that? Yeah, the the last I got was um, late last week. You know, he they had another um, procedure uh, to, you know, help and assist uh, in his recovery. Um, you know, he is in um, – uh, rehab and if you will, you know, working through that, you know, uh, process, but, um, you know, nothing to the point where I can, you know, tell you that, you know, all is, you know, all is, you know, a green light and, you know, everything's great. You know, he's still, he's still in a, a battle and, um, but he's making some progress. It just, you know, we all, we all want this, you know, to, to move to uh, a point where he's back in the building. And, and it's just going to be a longer process. Thanks. Uh, Coach, on paper, Alabama is one of the worst pass protection teams in the country. Have you guys kind of identified where they lack on that offensive line or maybe if it's the running back helping against blitzes? And do you see kind of those areas that you could attack too? Yeah, you know, numbers are – you know, a bit misleading. You know, I think some of those sacks were early on where there's some – there were a number of the sacks were about indecision at the quarterback position. You know, they had three quarterbacks in there early on in the year that were holding on to the football, quite frankly. Uh, we were hoping that that was the case, that we were hoping that it was a, you know, an offensive line that was just, um, you know, giving up sacks left and right, and that's not the case. Um, a lot of indecision at the quarterback position led to a lot of these sacks. Um, yeah, they've, you know, they've given up some sacks, but it's not an inordinate amount of sacks where you look at it and go, wow, this is just a leaky offensive line. Um, this is a big, massive offensive line uh, that's skilled. Um, you know, we're going to have to get pressure, um, and, and that's going to be part of this game. You know, being able to disrupt uh, the quarterback is going to be central to this. But I don't think we go into the game going, hey, you know, this is going to be an opportunity where we can, you know, pad our stats when it comes to sacks. Um, I, I'm not sure if we've asked you about him really all season, but it seems like Garrett Dellinger's just had a really solid season for you guys yeah. at that left guard spot. Just 
what have you seen in terms of his improvement and how is that, you know, I guess an, an, an I don't know, say indictment on just how good he's been that nobody's really asked you about him this year? Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think um, your assessment is, is, uh, is, is spot on. He's been steady, but he's been better than that. I think he's um, one of the things that he worked on. And, and again, you got to keep in mind, he had shoulder surgery last year and, and he didn't have the off season to train. He was able to train this off season, and 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 that made a huge difference. Quite frankly, he's stronger, um, and and he's on his feet. He was on the ground a little bit last year. Um, this year, he's been um, he's been really good. Um, and and one thing that helps is the combinations with him and Campbell have been as rock solid as as any that we've had. They get great movement. Um, and, and, and really have, you know, been on that left side, a big reason for our success in the running game. Um, so, yeah, he's been, he's been uh, I would say, better than steady. He's, he's been really, really good. Some of the players have told us that you've been more involved with the defense, um, you know, in the last half of this season, I guess. What have you seen as far as that progress goes? And, and just a kind of an overall temperature of your team. You know, we know what you're going in there with. What do you think their prospects are? Well, we're better defensively than we were um, when we played Mississippi. Um, I think uh, we've made steady progress. Um, uh, I think we're still work in progress, but we're getting better. I think our practice today, and I told them on the defensive side of the ball, was night and day compared to where it was against uh, Missouri on a Thursday. Um, so that's preparation, right? We have to perform. We got we to gotta tackle. We got to play the ball in the air. We've got to have 11 guys executing together. But um, we're, we're, we're definitely uh, making the kind of progress that, that I wanted to see with my own eyes. And, and, and we're seeing it. I would say that that has a lot to do with it. I think understanding how to play unit football, uh, guys not doing their own thing, understanding where they fit from four guys in a pass rush to um, being on a string with, with the corners and the safeties to linebackers in their fits. It's just, it's just a coordination of, of all players playing together um, and doing their own job. Hey, Coach, uh, with the whole Michigan situation and just with sign stealing in general, does that actually matter at all? Like, what, what, what does, like, I, I guess what just what I'm asking is, like, if the other team knew what your signs were, then how much would that actually affect things in, in a game, for example? Um, if, if they had our calls, if they had our call sheet, if they had – if they clearly knew we were running the ball outside right or th throwing the ball down the field, certainly would matter. Um, there's always been this thing, you know, where there are tells or tips. I'll give you an example. Uh, the guard is sitting back, and it looks like he might be pulling, right? But he didn't pull on that play, but he usually does pull. That's never been an issue in football, right? There are tells in certain um, uh, offensive formations because that's why people self-scout, right? You give a tendency away. That's a whole different thing. If somebody has your plays and somebody knows what they are and they know it's a run or a pass, yeah, it has a significant, um, uh, it has a significant outcome on the success um, of that particular play. Uh, Coach, going back to week one after Florida State, if I remember correctly, you said this team wasn't what you thought it was before that game. Mm -hmm. Going into this game now, weeks later, do you think this team is starting to mold into what you thought they would be week one? So my, my comments were, were much more about um, my sense of where we were, um, you know, in terms of our uh, maturity um, and, and, and how we needed to develop uh, a maturity as a football team. 
Uh, and, and I don't mean, um, you know, uh, making good choices or, or staying up late or, you know, not doing the little things the right way. Maturity as a football team means handling the moments. And I think our football team is much more mature in handling uh, the moments. I thought we were a little bit further along um, that we could handle a lead at halftime and not come out in the second half and think that the game was over. Um, we learned a tough lesson. I learned a tough lesson. I learned as a head coach um, that, that I needed to do a better job in terms of recognizing that. So I think I'm better for it. I think our team's better for it. I think we're in a better position than we were at that time against Florida State. With pressure being an important part of this game, like you said, what do you want to see maybe out of your defensive linemen turning particularly hurries into sacks? Like a guy like Savan Jones has six hurries but one sack. What kind of things need to happen to fully get home to the quarterback? To me, you know, it's, it's compressing the pocket and knockdowns are just as important as sacks. Um, look, everybody loves the sack coming off the edge and – you know, it makes for a great ESPN highlight. Um, but when that pocket is compressed and you can't step up and you have to throw the ball uh, in a manner that you're not comfortable with because everybody's in their pass rush lanes and everybody is in a unit pass rush, or that you're knocking down passes because you're timing up the throw, um, those, those are really important. Um, and they're equally as important as any individual pass rush so we're looking for all of those and I think we saw against um, our last few opponents uh, a combination of all those things we'll look for a combination of all those against Alabama just not beholden to this year but just in general how often would you change up your signals your on-field signals well this year we've changed it up um, against Mississippi because of a former player that was in our quarterback room. Uh, we changed him up a little bit this week. Um, so typically, um, you know, two or three times. So in our verbiage, we, we, have, um, we have words that can be, um, that can be uh, used two or three different ways, and we'll just go to the alternate way of using that word. Um, and, and that allows us to not have to throw out the entire um, nomenclature, if you will. Uh, I'll give you an example. You know, uh, if we use, um, you know, if we use, uh, you know, the, the number, uh, we, we use the months, for example. January might be one, right? The first month, January. Uh, we might go back to one and, and use the number one. So we'll just flip it that way and, and change it up um, so, so we have a, a fresh way of doing things. Good? All right. Thanks. Have a good day.